Good morning, everybody. This is a live extreme weather briefing ahead of a potential tornado outbreak today. And that includes a large section of Missouri. And I think there's going to be multiple different modes of severe weather uh, with this trough ejection. There's going to be along that surface low track across northern Missouri. Uh, looks like the Highway 36 corridor near uh, Interstate 70 and just to the north of Interstate 70. That surface low track passes very close to the Kansas City area, maybe just to the north of Kansas City passes into north central Missouri and then eventually into far northeastern Missouri and off to its east a warm front will lift up to the north and associated with that warm frontal zone are going to be surface southeasterly winds and easterly winds out ahead of that surface low track and that's going to squeeze out even more storm relative helicity uh, beneath that 40 to 50 knot low level low level jet I'm also monitoring a conditional threat of supercell storms that could evolve along that advancing warm front there in west central into central Illinois that is the most um, uncertain mode of convection that could happen today. But if it does, that's an environment that is very conducive uh, for a strong uh, tornado potential, cyclic tornadic supercells. And then I do expect a nocturnal tornado threat to evolve across the Ozark Mountains of southern Missouri into northern Arkansas. That's in green. And those storms are going to be a lot more long track. They're going to spread into central Missouri, southeastern Missouri, eventually arriving uh, near the St. Louis area as well by late evening. Uh, some of the uh, negatives that could happen are a rapid uh, development into a squall line. If that does happen, the magnitude of the wind shear is so great out ahead of it that I do expect uh, those tornadoes to be embedded within that line at uh, the very least uh, today. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center has maintained an enhanced risk across this entire area, and that does include a threat of uh, strong tornadoes as well. Uh, uh, that does encompass the majority of, of these modes. My plan is to head a little bit to the west toward Columbia, and then I'm going to go to the north of Columbia and then wait along that I, uh, Highway 36 corridor. I'm going to try to uh, target all modes of severe weather uh, uh, during this, the northern mode uh, along that surface low track. Uh, right now I'm looking at the radar here, watching uh, the uh, elevated mix carve out uh, some of this cloudiness already. Let me show you uh, the radar uh, right now, and you can see some of these storms uh, and associated cloudiness across central and northern Missouri. And we even have this flash flood warning right now. It does expire in about 15 minutes, uh, but this shows you that there was quite a bit of heavy rain overnight. We drove uh, into that uh, on the live stream approaching St. Louis early morning hours last night. Uh, quite a bit of lightning uh, with that, that uh, round of precipitation and multiple rounds of precip produced about three to four inches up there uh, in that flash flood area. So that's something that we need to keep an eye out as storm chasers too. Some of those back roads could be a little bit messy. And it does look like uh, this elevated mix layer is starting to carve out this cloud shield across western Missouri. Uh, that includes northeastern Kansas, western Missouri out here. Uh, you can see it just start to carve out some of that cloudiness. That's the elevated mix layer that we talk about, the dry air in the mid-levels of the atmosphere uh, that will come in around the south side and near the center uh, of an ejecting trough like this. And usually when you have a very progressive open wave like this, it is associated with a robust elevated mix layer now that's going to be effective at carving out this cloudiness at the back side. But you can definitely see this precipitation here. Will it delay the advance of the warm front? Short range models are saying no. Uh, they show that the track of that surface low is still across uh, northern Missouri there. Uh, to the north of the uh, Interstate 70 corridor, uh, mainly along this Highway 36 corridor here is where that surface low track is. And that brings with it uh, the strongest low-level wind shear as well. Uh, a lot of times during these setups, you have to decide, do you play the northern mode where the surface low is going to track? Or do you play a little bit further south down the front where you might have some greater instability where the low-level jet can ramp up and you get more of a contribution to that low-level shear uh, by the speed shear? down there from that increasing low level, low level jet. See kind of a weird little convective burst there, but looking upstream, it does look like this elevated mix layer is definitely carving out uh, some of this cloud shield uh, across the warm sector, uh, despite these flash flood warnings there from three to four inches of rain last night happening in that warm advection regime from that accelerating low level jet. So we can actually look at satellite here as well and see if we can see that elevated mix layer. And you can start to see it uh, begin to clear out that cloud shield back across eastern Kansas, southeastern Kansas, western Missouri here. Definitely some breaks within that cloudiness. And we can certainly see the elevated mix layer here 
uh, on uh, the mid-level uh, relative humidity here. Water vapor loop, mid-level water vapor. You can see these orange colors here. That's a little bit drier. That's that elevated mix layer that we're talking about. Not as pronounced as I thought it was going to be uh, here on uh, water vapor, but it definitely is going to be present, uh, certainly on many of the uh, forecast soundings. Uh, it's possible that, uh, and there you can see this uh, band of moisture and uh, showers and thunderstorms lifting off to the northeast, uh, getting replaced by some drier air here in the mid-levels. That's that elevated mix layer. That should allow for uh, destabilization. Uh, instability certainly is not going to be an issue at all. Uh, so my plan is to initially play that surface low track across northern Missouri, probably near the uh, Highway 36 corridor. And now I'm going to break down some of these short-range models. Uh, we're going to break down the timing of these supercell storms, the convective evolution as well. Uh, we're going to start off with the three-kilometer NAM model, of course. Uh, we're going to break down some surface maps, uh, surface obs. Look at those real observations as they're coming in. So this is the forecast for 21Z by the three-kilometer NAM, and it shows this uh, surface low track just to the northeast of Kansas City. That should bring the severe weather threat to the east of Kansas City by the time that NASCAR race gets going too, which is good news. It looked like it was going to be pretty close. Some of the NAM model runs yesterday and the day before were showing a little bit slower, less progressive evolution with that instability axis even being further to the west across eastern Kansas. But it does look like it is coming together here. And look at these easterly surface winds, these belt of easterlies here right along the track of that surface low. So it should track right along that warm frontal zone. And that's where the strongest wind shear is going to be located. Southwest and northeast storm motions, though, those storms are going to have a tendency to cross over that warm frontal zone really quickly. But really just to the south of the surface low, where you have this more north-south orientation to that Pacific front, uh, that's where uh, the greatest wind shear is going to be located, that south-southeasterly wind, even a due southerly wind there, uh, more backed low-level jet as well, uh, definitely could be in play. More north-south orientation to the Pacific front should allow for those storms to more effectively move off of that boundary as opposed to further south on that uh, cold front where you have a more southwest to northeast orientation, more parallel to that mid and upper level flow. But I do think some prefrontal troughs down there, prefrontal convergence bands, are eventually going to fire bands of renegade supercells here a little bit closer to sunset uh, near evening and uh, during the overnight across the Ozarks of northern Arkansas, southern Missouri. And that mode should lift into central Missouri and eventually impact the St. Louis area later on. But I am also monitoring this environment here across central Illinois, west central Illinois, with this warm front slowly lifting off to the north. You can see a lot of convergence here, uh, a surge in uh, southerly winds as well along that warm front. That could be enough to fire some renegade clusters of storms within that warm frontal zone as well. And that is uh, quite a favorable environment there for tornadoes as well. You can look at just simply the zero to one kilometer EHI, uh, which shows you that combination uh, of uh, surface space instability and zero to one kilometer storm relative shear. And you can see it's maximized here right up along that surface low track. This is at 21Z according to the 12Z three kilometer NAM. And you can click throughout that zone just to the south of the surface low where you have that more north-south orientation to that cold front anywhere within that zone. About a three-county uh, band here within that surface low track, uh, which is going to be that first mode. And you can also see some enhanced combinations here of low-level wind shear and instability further east along that warm frontal zone as it lifts north through west-central Illinois too. So if some storms can develop uh, within that conditional target area there, uh, within that uh, advancing warm front, then there could be some tornado threat as well with any clusters that are able to interact with that warm frontal zone. But out here along that Highway 36 corridor looks very favorable for a tornado threat, maybe starting as far west as the Chillicothe area, a little bit to the east of there near Morris along Highway 36. Uh, that looks quite favorable. You can see how this environment's going to evolve out here across north central Missouri, you can see that that axis lifts a little bit north too, just to the east of the surface low with that pop in the low level jet just to the east of it. And there you can see that low level jet southwest to northeast there at 50 knots over top of this arc. There is that 850 low uh, just over top that surface low across northern Missouri there. And that shows you that favorable environment uh, for severe weather right up against that surface low. You can zoom in here just a little bit. 
showing you that favorable environment out here. But there's also a strong southwesterly low-level jet further east across that advancing warm front across west central Illinois. You can also see that this axis, low-level jet axis, extends all the way down into the Ozarks of northern Arkansas, setting the stage for an uh, evening and nocturnal event. You can already see some of these prefrontal renegade clusters here trying to develop across the higher terrain of the Ozarks, northern Arkansas into southern Missouri. That's at 5 p.m. And this surface low ejects off to the east. This is at 6 p.m., 55, 60 knots there, about a kilometer above the ground. The nose of that low-level jet right up into the northern two counties there of Missouri, very close to that Iowa border. So it's uh, the tornado threat is very close to moving into southeastern Iowa there. But look at this low-level jet intensifying across the entire state of Missouri, and that's going to bring with it uh, that threat of strong tornadoes. At 23Z, you can click a sounding very close to the Morris, Missouri area, and you can see that these uh, photographs are just a little bit sheared. Let me remove my head there. And these critical angles are quite shallow, 35, 45 degrees, but you do have a 50 knot one kilometer wind out of the southwest. So that's a limiting factor are these relatively shallow critical angles. But usually with these types of systems, the speed shear is able to squeeze out enough storm relative felicity. Your zero to one kilometer storm relative felicity indicated here, 273 pushing 200 or pushing 300. And you can see this dry air here or elevated mixed layer coming in at the mid levels of the troposphere as you get a little bit of separation between that green and the red line. Uh, some decent cape as well, all the way down to the surface. Plenty of moisture there along that warm frontal zone. And that uh, as that instability axis noses up a little bit further north, just to the east of that surface low track. There you can see the uh, instability. Not the instability that you often see with spring, with that cold air aloft that you get with springtime. The second season, sometimes it is a little bit more difficult to squeeze out that instability, but you do have a lot of uh, zero to one kilometer shear associated uh, with this. And at 23Z, let's take a look really quick at the HRRR just to see how well uh, these features depicted. Look at the, the absolute crazy mixing that happens down near the Ozark Mountain region in the HRRR. Really don't believe uh, that mixing down there, uh, down through the Ozark Mountain region. And uh, that's one of the many reasons why I don't really value uh, that HRRR model uh, very much. Uh, but you can start to see the development of this southern mode, maybe right off the kink of that Pacific front. It is still oriented pretty north-south out there. So I think that there's going to be prefrontal bands of convection out here and along uh, that front. Uh, but overall, the HRRR is definitely showing uh, that a uh, favorable triple point zone right along that surface low track consistent with that first mode that we identified. And so this is at 23Z. A lot of times the HRRR is right for the wrong reasons when you're looking at this. Uh, this is at uh, 4 p.m. Shows you this arc here of supercell storms, likely tornadic supercell storms here to the north of the I-70 corridor, up near Highway 36 as well, east of, Saint, uh, of Kansas City. So that's important. Uh, this is at 4 p.m., so these supercells do initiate to the east of Kansas City, uh, which means that that uh, NASCAR race should be okay uh, by a very close margin out there, but you can see these classic bean-shaped supercells developing within that arc. You can also see another mode developing down here into central Missouri at 21Z, and these could also have a tornado threat. Even though the wind shear is even more flat, those critical angles are a little bit more shallow. Got to keep a close eye on this as well. The nose of these uh, could uh, uh, have some daytime tornado potential, 4, 5, 6 p.m., starting to nose up toward the Columbia area. These should have a tendency to be more of a squall line off to the southwest along that front. But given the upper level winds are going to be changing, veering with time as you go through the afternoon to the evening with more of this flat upper level trough, very compact upper level trough, you can see more west-southwesterly winds at about 60 knots there at 500 still should easily be able to move those storms off of that boundary, especially near any of those kinks where you can get a more north-south orientation to that Pacific front. And uh, these do evolve northeast through central Missouri. This is that nocturnal mode that we talk about. They appear to develop a little bit before sunset and uh, develop supercellular characteristics before that. Basically, I-70 down this front, all the way down. The HRRR suggests that that 
surface though track maybe not as favorable as is indicated by the three kilometer nam and those storms are going to have a tendency to cross that warm frontal boundary pretty rapidly but it looks like at about 8 p.m 8 9 p.m that tornado threat begins to arrive in the st louis area and you also have this nocturnal threat that begins down in the ozark mountain region i'm going to try to cover all of these modes of severe weather the surface low track the conditional uh, warm frontal zone here west central illinois and this nocturnal zone down in the Ozark Mountain region, northern Arkansas, southern Missouri there as well. So all of those modes I'm going to be covering. And then it looks like this threat shifts off to the east on Monday. Western Carolinas, western South Carolina, North Carolina, into the Piedmont. Looks like it could even have a tornado potential. Fast-moving squall line out there. Favorable kinematics. Uh, but today we got to get through today first with this Sunday tornado outbreak covering a large swath of the state of Missouri and uh, this is going to continue in the overnight hours especially over southeastern Missouri here even into southern Illinois uh, building all the way down through the Fort Smith area as well but the tornado threat by this time is likely going to uh, start waning as well so a pretty complex severe weather day today do you target the surface low track along that highway 36 corridor Columbia up toward Morris or do you just wait in Columbia for the northern edge of that mode to develop uh, in central Missouri? I say a nocturnal tornado threat there in green, but it does look like those supercells could develop a little bit earlier, maybe about 5, 6 p.m. Uh, down there into central uh, Missouri and then pass into central Missouri, eventually reaching the I-70 corridor potentially by 5 or 6 p.m., as early as 5 or 6 p.m. in the Columbia area east of St. Louis. So definitely stay safe, everybody today. Stay tuned to those watches and warnings. Keep those weather radios charged. You know your severe weather safety plans better than anybody. Make sure that you have those plans dialed in. I know they're usually dialed in for the spring, but this is the second season when the jet stream migrates back south. We have a lot of cold water in the northeastern Pacific within that PDO horseshoe. That's going to encourage a lot of western U.S. trough formation, a consolidated jet stream as well across the North Pacific. So I think that this is a sign of things to come for as well this active second season that we're experiencing right now uh, during the fall so stay tuned i'm going to be going live here later on when storm chase mode is activated possibly supercell initiation as early as about 3 p.m out there near the chillicothe area and uh, then i uh, probably will have to uh, track off to the east on highway 36 keeping up with that surface low and with that stronger wind shear as those storms are crossing over the warm front and likely then we'll drop down the line into central Missouri, covering the northern edge of that central Missouri mode, and then eventually dropping into the Ozarks for that nocturnal tornado threat. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this Sunday morning briefing. Be sure to tune in to Storm Rising as well tonight. Uh, that's going to be the Hurricane Sally episode, unless you are following the severe weather, of course. Make sure that you stay tuned to those severe weather watches and those warnings. But tonight is the intercept of Hurricane Sally Gulf Shores to, uh, to Pensacola, Hurricane Sally, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central on National Geographic. So thank you, everybody, for tuning into this morning weather briefing. Never stop chasing.